Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is another trying to fix video, another video where I, or in this instance, we try to fix something that's faulty. So I'm around my brother's house at the moment and his DVD drive here is playing up. So what happens is when you go to press eject, most of the time it doesn't work. Can you hear that clunk noise there? Sometimes it does, but often it doesn't. So let's try that again. There. You can hear it's making the noise, but nothing's coming out. So what he's having to do is either press that 50 times in the hope that it will come out, or use the paperclip method. So a lot of the times with things like this, it will have a little hole nearby where you can put a paperclip in and it will release your disc, or if you want to put a disc in, because this does actually work fine once the disc is in. So if you watch this now, I'm going to press it in, and I'm going to, hold on, there you go, hold it there for a bit. There, oh, okay, I missed it. Let's try that again. There you go. Okay, well it came out of its own accord then. Let's try that again. I missed, I missed it again. There you go. There you go, okay, I did it right that last time. So you can get your stuck disc out or you can actually get your disc and put it in. And once it's in, it is working fine. So now, probably can't hear it, but it's whirring up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this apart and then see if we can get it sorted. Let's just out of curiosity, see if it does come out of its own accord now. Yep. There you go. So, it seems to be better when there's a disc inside. So let's close it. Now let's see if it's going to work when there's no disc inside. There you go. You see? So, once a disc is in, it does behave itself more. Which is strange. Maybe it's a weight thing. Anyway, let's get this thing apart and see what's happening with it. So we have the desktop out and now we're just going to pop it on its side and we're going to take this side panel off and the drive itself is actually quite easy to remove. So to begin with, we're just going to undo these two screws here. And the side panel will just lift off. And you can see it just here. So we're going to have to undo the cables at the back. And we'll just pull out, lift up that catch, and the whole thing pushes out. So now let's get this onto the blue mat take it apart and see if we can find out what's causing this problem. Right, so here we have it, so we're just going to flip it upside down. Now my brother's going to be helping me. His hands are filthy, it's not that he's dirty, it's just he had a <laughs> job yesterday where he was working with resin and uh, they're quite dirty. So uh, let's get this thing apart and see if we can see what's happening. So it looks like there's just four Phillips screws here. Looks like it should just pry off, but there we go. Fixing lugs there. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Right, so we, I mean, I'm thinking it's a mechanism thing rather than an electrical thing. What do you think? Do you think it's going to be more to do with... It could be, I don't know, because it does seem to work better with a disc inside it, which, uh, which you seem to realise. Perhaps there's a micro switch that's being pressed, possibly. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, should we undo... Oh, we can't undo, this isn't a ribbon, this is actually soldered on, so we've got to be careful. Yes. So this can come off and this can come off. But uh, yeah, we'll... with this one, we're going to have to take this board off at the same time. Yes. So why don't we take the boards off? Can we get Thank this you. front off or not? Um, yes, I'd say we could. Yeah, there's a little tab there. No, no maybe not. Not with any great ease, is it? Uh, <laughs> well, actually, I suppose this comes I out with this, it. I think this that comes shelf, out with it, it doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. So that's going to have to stay for a bit. All right, well, let's, uh, let's take the boards. Let's take the boards off. Should we undo these? this... Ribbon cable here pushes out yeah, that way. That. So you see these little brown things yeah. that come out that way. Yeah. Okay. It releases that one. I never knew that. This one here will be, I would say, this way again. There and there. Oh, I never knew that. There you go. Sort of trying to fix videos, you see. Right, let's just take off that one. And this one here. This is, is this a motor? This is a motor here, isn't it? Is that a motor? It could be. Not sure if this I'm is sure, going to come I'm off. Sure. Uh, why have they soldered that? How annoying is that? If 
that was just a, a releasable ribbon cable, we could just pop that off there. Right, and there's a connection at the back here as well. So we've got a little, another little ribbon cable here. So let's pop that out. This will just be a, a pressure fit one. There we go. Well, we can put that there, that's no problem. So we've got some caps here, but this isn't particularly old, so we shouldn't have any issue with them leaking or anything, should we? It could be fairly old, actually, this. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know if there's a date in it anyway. Okay. I hope we don't break that now. Do you know what I mean? Is there any way this comes off at all? You think, you think there's a motor attached underneath well, it? I think this... Oh, maybe. No, hold on. Uh, no, I don't know. There's something here, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Seems to slide out this way, doesn't it? Oh, I didn't say at the beginning, just in case you're new to this channel, this is a trying to fix video, hence the reason we don't know what we're doing. So don't copy what you see in this video because we might be doing something wrong and you might end up doing more damage than good. So just take it for entertainment. So if we want to get the front off first, you would think that that's going to be holding it down, whatever happens, wouldn't you? You with yeah. me? Yeah. See, I'm worried about that cable there. Yes. Gonna, that's going to break pretty yeah. easy. Let's just have a look underneath it. I wonder if we ejected the tray, would it, might, might, would it come off yeah. there? Yeah, let's get a paper clip. I'll get the, uh, it might not be long enough, is it? Oops. So what that did is that forced this back a bit, you see. Hmm. Put the screw put the screwdriver in here and but see if it's out of my ear. Right, so that lifted this up here. Yeah. Oh, because it has to lift it up to get the disc in. Doesn't it? It has to take yes. it away. Yes, of course, and yes. then it will fall it will yes. fall back down yes. again. I wonder will this front come off now just as a matter of interest. Doubt it, but Oh yes. There we go. Excellent. Okay, so yeah. you have to lift oh because this is stopping it. Yes. This is this yes. is stopping yes. it here, the end of it here. Okay, that makes sense now. Right, okay. So we have got a little micro switch here, but that's just purely for this and that is working. Because every time we press the button here, it was clicking. Yeah. Some corrosion there. There is a little bit, isn't there? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Right, so I can see a little belt in there. I wonder, is there any way we can separate this all from the, the metal case? The whole thing? I'd say so. There's no hidden... Any hidden screws under there? I doubt it. No, there isn't. It's just at the deck. I would have there. It's at the deck here. It seems to go, want to go there. Oh, there we go, he's coming. Oh, okay. just purely this. Excellent. Yeah. Right, so we got, uh, this is the thing that hits against the disc to stop it. Is that a bearing? It must be some, uh, is it to keep the disc in sort of yeah. central, but it's very loose. Yeah. Let's flip this over a minute. Let's see. Let's see this side of it. Okay, so the disc sits on here. This lifts up and it pushes it against this thing here, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That this bit it. here goes into that here. That centres it then. That centres it then. And then, then that's, that's probably just some sort of a, yeah, a home crate. Well, I suppose this is the thing that doesn't move and this just... Uh, I know this whole thing turns, so that is this, a bearing. Oh, of course, and this doesn't turn. That doesn't turn, yeah. Right, so it bears okay. against that. Yes, yes, yeah, 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 sure. So when we put the disc in, let's think about this. When we put the disc in, it always wants to open, not always, but most of the time, wants to open. Yet when the disc is not in, it doesn't open. So, is it a weight issue? Or is there some... Uh, when you put the disc in, so there's a little hole here and here. Does that correspond to anything? Let's close this and see. That looks very flappy. That, that oh, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. right, so the only thing... The only the reason it would know there's a disc in here is because we have a hole here, here, here and here. I mean, the, the laser at this time when we're pressing it is not engaged, is it? 
Do you know when we press? No, it to no, 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 no. It isn't no because it's, it's no. So I mean, the disc, the weight of a disc, I wouldn't have thought would have had much impact, but maybe unless there is a tiny little switch somewhere because there is a bit of movement there, isn't there? Can you feel? Yes. So should we try and open it again see if there's any switch anywhere? So this is down. Ah, hold on a minute though. When it's closed, this is up, isn't it? Or is it? When it's closed, this must lift itself up. But maybe only when it's alive. Do you think? See, maybe it's not coming out because this is not dropping down. Yes. Because it makes like a clunk. Do you reckon, that, do you reckon it's that this is not... Because this has to be down, otherwise it's going to catch on here. Yeah, where does that go? So that when you put, when you put the, 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 the paper clip in, it goes into that gap there. It pushes into something there, doesn't it? Oh, it just moves, so it just moves this round. So this is not ah, right, okay. So this is the thing here. When this yeah. is moved over, it must lift this up. Yes. Yeah? So if we were, I suppose this has to be closed in order for that to happen. Did it just move up then? So when you, there you go, you push that round there and it, it's what it does. There you go, look, let's close it. When you push that thing in there, yeah. it pushes this down to release this out. So watch this. Oh, is that what let's, it does? It pushes, let's, it pushes, let's, let's close it quite forcefully. It pushes the whole tray down. There you go, did you see it come up? Yes. So watch this now. Here, this section here gets yeah. pushed that way and it pushes this oh, down, right. which then allows you to uh, pull this okay. out. So the fact these cogs are slipping is saying to me it's pushing against, these, this is working, but it's pushing against the resistance or something. That, 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 this hasn't gone down. So let's whack that, watch it come up, hold on. There, that definitely lifted up. Yeah. Do you reckon it could be a grease issue? That it just needs more? Oil maybe. Yeah, because I have got plastic grease. Yeah. And also, so the belt is just this one here, but I don't think that belt looks, yeah. should we take it off? I think we could do. I think we could. Do you know what? That we could power it up. And see if we can see what's happening. Yes, possibly. It's only low voltage. Do you think that's still got elasticity in it? But it's, it's, uh, I don't know what a new one's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels a bit hard though, doesn't it? It does. There's no cracks or anything in it. Shouldn't these things go? Maybe not. I think you think so, but it might not be rubber. It might be a, mo a more modern material. Yeah. See, I have got spare ones. I don't know if that's small, but they're definitely not mm. that thick. Definitely not going to be that thick. I think we'll leave it on there for the time being. I don't know if that's the problem. I, I don't think the belt's the problem. Do we, the only thing I can think is to power her up. And this, this is... There is more gears over there. So when it goes, it just clunks. So I wonder what that clunking sound is. What's that clunking sound? Could it be? Is it this falling down? Coming down? Or not coming down, trying to come down, but not. Yeah. What we need to find out is what drops it. So we put the screwdriver in there yeah. to make it drop. Yes. But obviously there's a motor that makes it drop. And that must be this motor here. Right. Do you think? Just, do, do, do you know what I mean? Something has to move these gears. Yes. Let's move this out again. Uh, let me free it, hold on. There. Right, something has to move this here. Yes. And, oh, hold on, the motor we there's see a minute ago is the motor here. That's that motor. So, and there's more gears here. So maybe these gears also go underneath here to move this thing? Maybe. So really we could do with we getting free that, this. That, that PCB off, couldn't we? Well, that, see, that's attached. To, I, I'm wondering if it's if you do it from the other side. Because of all the gears and stuff, it's not going to come off. Do you see what I mean? Yes. So is there a way we can release? We this. can release. The, there you go, we can. Push that, push that in there. And push. That's that side out. 
this side must just there you go perfect right so that's now free so now we can work on this bit here so when you close it it's there we go close this like that but it's not Jinko's slipping then so you put a bit of pressure on that no that's pretty good isn't it no, just putting pressure on the motor wheel then yeah that's good yeah so could you reckon it's there's a little switch here isn't there let's see oh ah there's a switch here but we, but we don't get to the... no because that's the switch that just turns it on isn't it that's yes. the switch that says it's closed. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. We don't get it closed. So let me zoom in a bit more. We so don't get it so to drop down. Right, so there is, if you look closely here, there is a tiny little switch mm. that's uh, bang. Yeah. Okay, so that, that lets it know that it is closed and probably to start spinning. Yes. But it's just making a clunking noise, like, but I can't replicate that clunking noise. It was quite a loud bang. It was quite yeah. a loud noise, wasn't it? Yes. So it's not this that's moving, it's this thing. Oh, hold on, look. That needs to be here to engage that. I think... It's missing. Do you think it's gone too far? Do you see what I mean? Yes. Because look, surely this is the gear. Because there's only one motor. And if this is here, it's not turning. What's this cob doing then? Well, this is the thing that allows us... To, well, it opens this and closes it. And manually. also allows... Yeah, but not just manually, no. But this whole bar across here, can you see, moves this. Yes. So, in theory... Yeah, what's this white thing do? This white thing, I think, is purely the manual. It's purely the manual, you think? Uh, I think so. Because I think if we took that off, I think this would still, this would still operate here. Yeah. In fact, we should be able to take that off. Oh, no, we can't because of that there. Oh, we can if it's here. Or is it going to be a bit tight? No, it's going to be a bit tight. I don't really want to break I think the grating has to come off first, wouldn't you? Yeah. I'm wondering whether... See, look... There, there must be a spring under here, and I think that spring has gone loose because it needs to be more here. See, at the moment, it's only going to here. Yes. I think it needs to go all the way to here. Just just so it just catches. Just so it just catches. Just, just catches. Yeah. yeah. But when the disc is, why does it make a difference when the disc is in? So, can we get can we get the disc? Yeah, of course, can we get any disc in? Uh, if we power it up, we're going to have to put the ribbon cable stuck in, remember? Yeah. Well, this is this grey thing's the only thing that I can see that looks a bit iffy, because I don't think that this side is motorised at all. I think this is the motorised yes, side. Yes, and yes, yes. It doesn't matter. That can spin all day long. It's not going to actually. It's not doing anything. But the weird thing is, why was it making the click? I'm wondering whether there's just a little spring in here that's just lost its spring a bit. So why, when we put a disc in, so the disc would sit here? No, would the disc sit? How would the disc sit? Well, hang on a sec, hang on. That cog there, Yeah. I think its primary purpose is to drive this. Oh. In and out. Oh, OK. OK. This and this, 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 this is what drops and the, the thing, isn't it? Yes. OK. So, but how does this know to engage in here? Does something in here I move I think something, it? this might pull it over as it comes out. Would it know? Well, we can, should be able to tell from here. So that's that side. It was in that way, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. So when we push it in here, see, we have got a, we have got this here, haven't we? A little plastic yes. thing, and that has got a tiny little. Uh, that plastic runs on this. Yeah. So. Uh, I can't see anything obviously wrong with it. Maybe we need to power it up to see. And it worked perfectly. Do you think? Yeah. Uh, but I think I think I don't think we, I think so. Is or is it is it, a, is it a question of cumulative wear on everything? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I'm see, just that, wondering that, that runs up and down there, doesn't it? This. 
No, this must be at rest down. Yeah. And then when the, the, the tray comes out, something happens that pushes this across here. It puts it up. When the tray comes in, sorry, when the tray is fully in. Yes. Only then will that... Well, well, yeah, but it's a gradual thing, you know, for this last little bit. Yeah. So as this tray comes fully in... Mind you, it was only the last bit where it jumped up. Ah, right. Sorry, this does make sense. Listen, this here is spinning to get the tray in and out. Yes. But we only want this to come up at the last second. That's it. So obviously there must be something shaped here at the it's end. It's activating that up to come up at the last it second. It is. It must be in here. Is it this groove here? Yes, and then it. it goes here, look. Yes. And it's this bit here yeah. which makes it push across. Yes. So that bit isn't incorrect. Yeah. So that's not our problem. No. Because yeah. look, if you have a look, uh, let me show the camera. So it looks like it goes, let me zoom out of it. So it's in here, this, this grey uh, thing. What do you call that? Knob. <laughs> Great knob. Intrusion. Is, in, is in this bit here. And then you see it moves all the way along and it only kicks over when it gets to this last bit here. Uh, because we want this to spin on its own to be able to go on this tooth bit here to be able to pull it in and out. And then at the very last second, it moves across and pushes this up. So the very fact it's not opening means that it's going to be in the up position there, yeah? Yes, so it's going to be in the up position. So then when it's opening, it the first thing it has to do is drop this down. The first thing it has to do is drop this, and it's not. When we don't know that, we don't know that at rest it's not like that. No, it's not. It can't be. Because uh, otherwise the discs would get damaged. Because look, you see if we do this, can you see it's going to be damaging against here? Yes. Yeah, so I think at rest... Well, no, because the disc is held here. Yeah, but it's still... Oh, uh... Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, I think we'd have to power up. Right, okay, we're gonna connect this back up to the PC but have it off and then hopefully we might be able to see and hear the clunking noise. We might see where it's coming from because maybe it's where in one of the motors where it's not, uh, I mean, we don't know. We don't know, but that's, uh, let's put it back together on the PC and see what's happening. So my brother's just loosened up the cables here so we can work on it nice and comfortably. Now, uh, with this, there's no risk of electric shock because if you have a look at the back here, it basically says five volts and 12 volts. We're okay to work on it. Now, there is actually quite a bit of corrosion that I've noticed down here on the front of the board. So what I'm doing is, you can see in particular, can you see this sort of dots just here? So I've just been going across and everything on the ribbon cable is actually connecting to where it's supposed to. So although it's a bit corroded, it looks like it's okay. So for example, this one goes down to here. You can hear it beeping. This one goes to here. The broken one goes to here and it still goes. There. I've gone through it. I've gone through every single one of them. Oh, those two are together. Okay, perhaps that's normal. Oh, they're connected via the motor, that's why. So, uh, yeah, although it's corroded, I don't think that that is the problem. Right, so we've got the leads ready to connect up. Now, hopefully it will make more sense now that we can see the inside exactly what's happening. So let's pop the leads in the back. All right, so it's spun up there, but it was very wobbly, wasn't it? Well, it's, it's not been secured. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Mind you, that's not going to give it much. It will, you'd be surprised. Yeah? Yeah. It's in so, this plane. Sure, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it needs pressure down. Yeah. So the, so the only thing missing now is, is this top bit here, which we can replicate by our finger anyway. Yeah. So if we press... We, 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 ideally it should be empty anyway, shouldn't it? Because we, we want to open it. Yeah, okay. So now it should normally work because there's a disc in it. Right, so it works with the disc. Let's just... Now let's see what's happening. Okay. Right, so it's working now. Which is always the way, isn't it?
I'm not sure it's the band. Yeah, I'm not sure if it is the band because if you look here, so yes, it uh, doesn't take much to stop it here. You can see the motor's spinning now, but yet the gearing, it takes a lot to stop it here. Listen, see it's still going. So I'm, we don't really think that it is the band because look, this is the thing that's going to be doing the moving, not here. There's no resistance on this part here as far as we know. It's just to do with the gear here. Just going to see if I've got any bands anyway. Okay, so we're thinking it's not the band, but I haven't got a right size band anyway because these are for like a Walkman. Uh, thought possibly could it be capacitor uh, related because the weird thing is, apparently once it's left for a while, it has less chance of working, but then when it starts working, it keeps on working. But this is the really confusing thing for me from what I've seen today. Earlier on, every time we put the disc in it, it would work. But then every, every time we took the disc out, sorry, not every time the disc was in, because if you left it for a while with the disc in, then it wouldn't work. But then when you did the screwdriver thing and then got it working, it would keep working with the disc in. But then every time we took the disc out, it wouldn't work. It would just make that clunking sound like you've seen at the beginning of the video. But why would just this disc make any difference if it was a capacitor issue for example where they were draining away and then they didn't have the power to give it the initial surge to open it why would it make a difference if the disc was in it it wouldn't so this is a really confusing one so we're going to keep thinking about it and then when we work something out we'll get back to the video Okay, annoyingly, it is working perfectly, and I say annoyingly because it's an intermittent fall, and this just used to remind me of the days when I was with BT as a telephone engineer. Unfortunately, with intermittent faults, you're kind of wasting your time. I mean, what we used to do is just change something that we thought. We listened to what the customer used to say, and we just used to change something. Like, for example, if they said, it crackles every time the wind blows, and there was a big tree, and the wire from the pole was going through the tree, we would change the wire out, because that's the most obvious thing that it could be. But often, it could end up being a fault in the exchange, and it's just exactly the same here. It's working perfectly, so when something's working perfectly, it's almost impossible to say what it was. Now, some of you watching this might have a lot of experience in this, and you might be like, 100%, it's this gear here, or it's uh, lack of grease or something. In which case, then, add it to the comments, and then we'll know. But right now, there's not really much we can do. But what I am going to do is, while it's open, I'm going to clean the lens here with some IPA with a little uh, Q-tip, a cotton bud, and more importantly, I'm gonna grease everything up. So, we have a motor here that moves the laser up and down. I'm gonna grease up the spindle over here, this side, where is it now? Yeah, it's down this side here, so we're gonna grease that up. But really what I wanna concentrate on is these gears down here, especially this bit here. So if you have a look, what happens is, it's the little motor, remember I said that this thing was on a spring, and it's the little motor moves this over before allowing the tray to come out. And the reason this drops down is because it travels in this thing here. So you can see it looks like an escalator here and here. So when this gets moved across, it forces this to come up. So let's say now if there was a tiny little bit of play here or it was dry, then in theory, this could drop but then maybe, or, well, not there. See, this is the thing, I, I, I really don't know. Maybe if there was some issue with this thing here, because it doesn't take a huge amount of resistance to stop it. So if I was just to hold my hands here, for example, now you can see, it doesn't take a huge amount to stop that from coming out. So if there was some kind of issue with the gear here, it, it could be just lack of grease. I really don't know, it seems unlikely. It's just the very fact that this is the thing that's really confusing me. It was why when the disc is there, is it making, is it, is it, is it okay? So what we did is we took the motor off, took these three off here, and it all looks absolutely fine. And we put pressure down on the motor and pressed it, and more importantly, we lifted this up. And it takes a lot, there's a lot of pressure there. And you can still see it's wanting to work anyway. So let's just stop. So I'm lifting it up now, which is gonna be way more than what the disc weighs. There, you can, you can, if you know, it's lifting itself up. So it wasn't a coincidence. Every time the disc was in there, it was working. But I really, really don't know why, because the weight of the disc is on this spindle and not this tray, which makes you think it's not a mechanical issue. Really, really don't know. I'm just going to have a look at this lens one time. As soon as we press that, to see if the lens moves. 
No, see, it only does its focusing when it comes back on. So it's not exactly as if, like, it's losing power because there's a disc in there or no disc in there. I'll be honest, it's a complete mystery. So we can only do what we can do, and that's grease everything up and put IPA on the lens and see how it performs. And hopefully, with an intermittent fall, it should get worse and worse to the stage where it stops working completely. Then we can see what's wrong with it. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do now. We're going to grease it all up. So we just popped this off here. It was easy to take off when we took the belt off. I mean, this is the little spring, uh, you know, the thing that I said about springing earlier. So this is the switch. This is the thing that makes this, this one spring back and forth. So what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna put a bit of contact cleaner just in here. Again, it all looks fine. I know there's corrosion on this side of the board, but this side looks absolutely perfect. This is really interesting and it's always the way when you put something back together. Now, it was working flawlessly every single time we had it there, but watch this now. Yes, it works fine like this, but watch this. Often these now might be on their side. Now watch. Not working. You see the clunking noise? Again, upside down. Hold on. Not working. And this side. Sorry, it's because it's still wearing from the time before. Now, so it must be something to do with the weight of this top bearing. When it's down in the right position, it allows it to work. Now, let's put a disc in and see if the weight of the disc allows it to work on its side. So in theory, it shouldn't work now either, should it? But it does. Let's try it upside down. No. Oh, yeah, that's, that's okay. That's because I uh, put it that way. So let's do it this side now. Let's rest it down here. Are these sometimes on their side? Yes. Oh, they are, yeah, in my, in my, uh, yeah. Not the in my PC the they're on this side, yeah. yeah. So it works with the disc in. Now, why does that work then on its side? With the, let's try it now. No, so why does having a disc in make it work on its side? Because that top bearing wouldn't be hitting it anyway, would it? Well, does the top bearing add any weight to it when it's on its side? Might give a bit of a push. So it's definitely not working now, but now, hold on. Wait. Let's see, one sec. Try now. No. Oh, it did. It did, but then. What is it? Is that clunking noise the sound of it going down? I think so. Or trying to at least, something moving. Right. So give it a bit of a squeeze now. Right. Okay, intro now. No. No. But now, let go. Maybe I'll just give it a bit less of a squeeze. Yeah. I might have been overdoing that. No. What is going on? <laughs> I don't know. This is a complete mystery. You have to go, I've got to do the school run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Unless you want to take it with you. But can, can, have you, have you, have you got, you, you've got one, of, you've got a, or you need a power supply for it, off, off your PC, you've got that, haven't you? Uh, well, no, we can, we can do it another day, it's not a problem. The video doesn't have to be done now. Uh, 
But that's really weird. I'll tell you what, let's take it apart quickly again just to see if there's anything, anything obvious. So we're just going to film again when it's apart. Right, this is interesting. So now we've removed it from the case and it's upside down. And it's working perfectly. And if we put it on its side, remember this is loose at the front, so that's why it's a bit dodgy. So it's when it's in the case that it's not working. And my brother just noticed on, put, watch this. So there's a magnet in there. So when this is upside down, it's, uh, look, can you see it's kind of like loose like that. But then I suppose when it's on its side, it just sits like that. So I wonder. The magnet should be attracting it to this though. The magnet should be attracting it to that. You would think. That's but, pretty magnetic. Okay. But why, why then is it working without the case? You know, why is this hindering it from working? This that is could be a red herring. Maybe the, the magnet attacks it to this to, to, pull, to pull it tight in order for it to revolve. As part oh, of its function. Oh, in which case then this is... Is this spinning or not? In its, is this spinning in its case or is this stationary? Oh, that's quite that's a, a good, strong... That's a good question. a strong magnet. Do you know what? This is this is spinning, but there's no friction because it's the magnet that stops it from having friction. Yeah, I can't see that spinning there. That's a, that's that's too crude. No, I think it's magnet just attracts it to it, and then that's that just that's that just slip around it. That just slips in there. Do you think? Yeah. For that to be spinning, there's, there's no bearing there at all. Should that, that that's pure crude. Right. Okay. Well, should we put this back on without the base Bottom, and yeah. see if it works, and yeah. then. Well, I suppose the easiest thing, first of all, is just to pop the bottom on to make sure that it's still working with the bottom on. I can't see how that makes any difference. So it looks, it looks like it's something to do with this, though, doesn't it? Do you not think? Just that way. Just... Right, so that's on there now. Right, it's definitely working with the bottom on. Well, look, we're getting somewhere, so I think it's linked to this here. And the only thing on here is this, unless... So, oh, we need to... Uh, one second, let me eject it. Right, there we go. She's in. Right, so now let's pop that in, back in. Oops, sorry. Right, so now let's see. No. No. Right, we're getting somewhere. No, and no. Hang on. That's the oh. This has to drop down for it to in order for it to open. That's the first thing that happens. Is this drops towards that way? For oh, it. and the magnets keeping it the up. The magnets keeping it up. It can't overcome the power of, of the, the magnet. magnet. Brilliant. We're getting there. Right. So the reason. This has to drop down, as we know, you know, the inside bit has to drop to allow the, the, uh, the tray to come out. But because the magnet's too powerful, it's not allowing it to drop, is what it Fully. is. Fully. So if we give it a little help in hands, so now let's see. So right now, look, it's not working. There. Okay, so let's... So We what? can see, it, it's, she's settled in that plastic thing there, we can see it through here. So, the thing is, it's not going to spin because of the. Uh, it needs a disc in there, doesn't it? The la the laser has to see the disc, I think. No, but we're not. It, it, that's, it shouldn't have made it. So if I push this down now, make yeah. the magnet ever so slightly weaker. No. No. So although you've made them, all you've done is it's still stuck to the magnet, though, isn't it? It's still not. stuck to the magnet because gravity is against her at the moment. Right, okay. So, so put gravity we... with it. Yes. And it, she might work. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, but now, is it not working? Because obviously the magnet hasn't increased in strength. Has the motor got weaker? Is it the motor that's weak? Maybe that's... that belt is slipping. Maybe that, that, that might be it. Just hasn't quite got the... The oomph. The oomph. But in which case, then we should see the motor. We should see if that's the case. We should see the belt slipping, shouldn't we? You know? 
Uh, can't because you can't it's... see it because of that. Yeah. I don't think the belt, unless it is, for example, an electrical issue. For example, you know, like the capacitors or something are not in range, and they're not sending the right is power. There any capacitors in this? Yeah, do you remember yeah. on yeah. the? Uh, yeah. Was it the other side of this? All right. She definitely. She doesn't want to work like that at all now. No. Now we we'll just pop pop the case off again. Oh, hold on one second. I just want to see how much strength it needs to overcome it. Not a huge amount. Yeah, that's why the, probably the weight of the disc was enough when gravity was with it. Yeah. But now it's working better than it was because it's working all the time now when gravity's on its side. When all the time. Uh, with or without the disc. Yes, it is. Yeah. With, when gravity's on its side. Yeah. 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 Okay, but the magnet hasn't changed in strength. Yes, there could be wear. I'm just wondering whether the motor needs to clean on the inside. The motor, can you clean the motor on the inside? Yeah. Oh, well, hold on. Not this one. I'm on no, a. No, I understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Idea, yeah. I tell you what, let's take let's take that apart again. Have you got time? Uh, yeah, I've got 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay. So let's. Should we take the power out? Yes. Yeah. I'm just going to unsolder this motor here just to see what it looks like on the inside, if we can get inside it. That silicon lead is it? It's got. It doesn't burn so easy. I don't. I've never. <laughs> I've never tried, I've never tried it. I think that's off. Here we go. Let's see, are you getting good at this? So, what, does it matter which way round that goes? Well, look, that red dot there was for the positive. Will we remember that? I don't know, does it say positive on it? Well, it says say positive yeah, there. Red, Red's positive, we yeah. remember that, yes. Okay, yeah. so what we're going to have to do is, is there a way we can take, ah, uh, it's got all the little plastic things, so we're not going to be able to take this apart, are we? But is there going to be, it's not like an old toy, Toy. I'm just thinking the old toys, have, you know, I've seen it where they're black on the inside, but this wouldn't have had much use. It might have done because it was in 2007. It would have come from a commercial environment. Do, or do it could have been used a lot. Yeah, but the yeah. thing is, Paul, if we unsold, if we melt those plastic, we're never yeah. going to get this back together again. I see. Do you see what I mean? You know, it hasn't got those little tabs that you can take off. I'm wondering now, do you see these ones here? Yeah. Do you reckon it could be something to do with the corrosion here, which is not, there's a bit more resistance, so there's not as much current going Possibly. through. Is there anything we can do? There's nothing we can do about it, is there? Well, the only bad one really is this one. Yeah. I wonder, could we put a jumper wire between here and here? Yeah. Or would that not make a difference? Mind you, there's so much metal here, one little wire isn't going to take the place of all that, is it? Yeah. So I have another one of these, it's got exactly the same problem. Oh really? Yeah, it's up in the loft somewhere. I'm wondering if the motor, what do you think? Do you think it could be that the motor hasn't got enough oomph or do you think it's wearing the gears? Probably a combination of factors. Okay, well I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Probably a slippage on, a bit of slippage on the belt, a bit of wear in the gears, a bit of wear in the motor. It's just making it cumulatively too weak to perform its function when any, any little thing at all is against it. Like yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, look, I, I personally don't think it's worth ruining this motor. Right. Because it... Doesn't look that old, does it? It doesn't. Doesn't it? And I'm thinking it's not going to have a... I know what you're saying, but they're not... People don't put discs in and out like 100 times a day. No, they don't. So the motor's not really going to have spun that much. But now I've got the soldering iron out, why don't I solder this back up? Should I just tap each one of these contacts just to make sure they are? Okay. I mean, the only thing we've seen on the board is that there is corrosion here. Yeah. And that is very corroded there, but there's still continuity, yeah. but maybe, I don't know.
just want to see if the motor's squealing or not, because if the motor sounds perfect, then I think it's unlikely to be at fault. But if it's squealing, then we've got an idea that maybe it is a dirty contact in there. So let's uh, see. There we go. Does that sound OK or not? It doesn't take much. It's hard to know what, what force I'm expecting, to be honest. Yeah. But it's not overly noisy, is it? Mm. No. No. But I wonder, would it help from... We can't really get any... Uh, sealed that side, isn't it? So the only side you could oil it from is that side there. Would it be worth putting a dot of oil there? Does that help a motor? Uh, well, as long as it doesn't get on the, the contacts, yes. I think a tiny bit's OK on no, the have shaft. Have got any oil? WD-40, I've got WD-40, is what I've got. Be too much. Obviously, we only need... Oh, I've got, I've got shaper oil. That's, is that finer? It's not really, is it? No. I'm not sure. See, I just use uh, watch oil, but maybe that's the same stuff. Yeah. I'm wondering, just a dot on a needle, or would that make a... Yeah, I think, think it's, it's not going to make it stronger, though, is it? Really? Mm, well, there'll be less resistance. Yeah, OK, we'll, we'll, we'll try it. So, just got this oil here. I don't know if it's the right sort or not, but we're only just going to try a bit. So I'm going to put a bit on the mat. And then put that onto the small screwdriver and try to get it in. Obviously nowhere near the plastic part of it. Just to try to get a bit in the spindle. Sounds quieter, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, that does sound quieter. Whether that's going to give it any more strength or not, I don't know. Such a shame we haven't got another belt. I'll see if I can find a. Yeah. Uh, elastic band, small elastic band. How about if I want to go get kids? I have to dig it. I'll take draw yeah. part. Right, okay, so I'm going to do the score run now, so back to this video shortly. Right, so we've oiled the motor, so let's put it back together just to see if it's made a difference. And if not, what I'm going to do is, I haven't got the right size belt, but just sort of just to experiment, I can fold it over, and then that will be around about the right size, and then we can eliminate the belt, and, uh, well, you never know, it might even work just from oiling the motor. Should we plug it in? Oh, it is in. Right, let's see first of all if it's working this way. Yep. Yeah. Right, that's working that way. Not working that way, but would you expect it to work on its on its back? Let's try this way. Didn't work like that before, did it? No. Should we try a little bit more? Yeah. I think that's probably is asking too much though, because it's... It might be, yes. Yeah. It's not designed to work upside down. Yeah. Well, it definitely didn't do that before. No. So the only thing we've done now is oil the motor. And resolder. Resolder just the joints to the motor, yeah. but they were fine anyway. Should we put the belt on just to see if it does work upside down? Yes, let's just try to upside down one more time before we've got the belt on. Yeah. So, have you got the screw? Different? Just hang on, watch the, where's the, where's the button gone? Just try it upside down, just one more time. Oh, okay. Now she's freed up a little bit. Yeah. No. I wonder, would it work upside down? Yeah. We'll try the belt, eh, shall we? Yeah, let's we'll we'll swap takes. the belt over, and then we'll know. So let's open this up. Easier, isn't it? Seems to be. Seems to be a bit more under strain. A bit slower coming out that last bit. Mm. See that belt's probably a little bit tight now. Yes, yeah, probably actually putting resistance. But look at that. It works. I want. I reckon get a new belt for it. Yeah. Or would not the doubling up of the belt do? Let's just use a looser belt. Use a bigger belt and double it up. Well, you leave that one on then. Do you reckon it doesn't well, get a lot of use? Just not no, going to no, wear it but, out. What? Oh. Uh, what's happened? Oh, look, it snapped. 
the belt snaps. No, it's come undone. It's come undone. It's come undone. But would that be because it's too tight? Let's, let's... Maybe, maybe it's because it's doubled up. It's come out of the wheel's groove. Yeah. And it's worked its way off. Okay, sure. So let's have a measurement of the belt then, so I know what to order. I tell you what, well, let's let's look on uh, eBay and see if there isn't, because maybe maybe they're quite common. Yeah. So I'll turn this off. Phone or something there, Vince, because oh, of course the here. computer's there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so we had a look on eBay, and good old eBay has come up with the goods again. If you look at this one, 22 millimeter rubber drive belt for cassette, and it looks like it's the outside diameter here. It says. Uh, 22 diameter, 69 approximate length, 1 meter square section, and that all seems to match up. It's only 99p with 80p postage, so £1.79. And uh, yeah, when we've measured ours, it did appear to be around that size. It looks to be about between 22 and 23. So, what we did, just as a temporary measure, I'm sure it's not going to last for long. Basically, we need to order up a belt for £1.79. It's definitely worth it to get this working again. But we just dropped the existing belt, so this is the existing one, in a uh, pan of boiling water for five minutes. So we didn't put it in a Ziploc bag or anything, just straight in the pan of boiling water, cooked it for five minutes. Now we've put it on here, and it does appear to be working. We've only tried it twice, so it might fail now. But it does appear to be working in every orientation. So that's that way. That's that way. And it even worked last time upside down, but let's just do it this way. There. And it seems a little bit slower on that last bit. And ready. There we go. So 100% it's the belt, but as well as that, I think the motor did benefit from just a little bit of an oiling, because remember, it wouldn't work on its side with the existing belt before we boiled it, and after oiling the motor, it then worked on the side. At the same time, we did solder the top of the motor, but I don't think there was anything wrong with those connections. So I think that the problem was, A, the belt, and I think we've helped it by oiling the motor. And we've given it a little bit of a service just by oiling up, a, uh, greasing up a few parts and also cleaning the little lens as well. So hopefully this will keep working. So my brother's gonna order up one of those parts now and then when it arrives, put it in here. Hopefully this little one will keep working until then. If not, he'll just have to use the paperclip technique to be able to remove it. So uh, I think it was quite an interesting one. What do you think, Paul? I think so, yes. Yeah, very interesting to see how it works. Yes. Yeah, I'm surprised to see a magnet in the top of that. Yeah. And yeah, it'd be interesting to see whether it was with no bearings in there, where the, how the, would the, uh, how to dissipate the friction. Yes, yeah, yeah. So if, if anybody knows that, so basically it comes up and this thing comes down. Obviously this bottom one's spinning. We, we know that because that's what's spinning the disc. But this top bit, is it stationary and the bottom one spins in it? Or does the top thing magnetise to it and then the whole thing spin? So if you know that, just put it down in the, the comments, just purely out of curiosity, because obviously it works and it, it must work well because these things do work. But for me, it looks like to be a bit of a bad design because I'm thinking it's going to create friction against the plastic to the metal here or against the actual spindle to the plastic. So either way, there's no kind of bearings there, so you would think it would cause friction. But obviously, it works, so it's happy It's happy doing that. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that one, and I'm glad we stuck with it, and it came up with the eventual fix, even though it took quite a long time to get there. But that's, uh, that's what these trying to fix videos are about. So we're gonna call it a day now, order up the part, and then hopefully this will be running again for many years to come. So if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, and it's bye from me, and it's bye from my brother Paul. Bye. <laughs> See you later, take care, bye now. Thank you.